All right. So uh, I'm not sure how many people are uh, live with us right now, but today we're doing another uh, surprise stream. We're trying to work out all the kinks. And uh, I have a couple of volunteers with me uh, that I've never taught before, but we're going to do a, um, a guitar lesson for adults. Uh, and this should be fun. And uh, so join along. And uh, if you're a guitar player uh, or a musician, uh, and see if you can uh, learn something. And uh, this should be super fun. All right, so I have Justin and Scott. Um, you guys can unmute yourself, and uh, we're doing this through Zoom. And uh, um, and let's see if I can hear you guys. So, Justin, can you say something to me there? All right, how does it? Ah, it's doing good, Justin. So, Justin and I had uh, worked on a project. We recorded Wipeout um, uh, um, that you had recorded. You did, uh, I think you did the guitar lines and you did the drum lines. You did a really killer job. And there's a, a spot on your uncle's uh, um, YouTube channel where you can go and check that out. Um, and Scott, um, we met about 10 minutes ago in the conference, video conference, um, and so I have no idea actually what you can do as a guitar player, and I've never even seen you play, um, but thanks for, uh, for joining me here, Scott. All right. Um, so let's see, I want to be able to get something for each of you, and Scott, so what, uh, um, what do you normally play? Like, what is, what's the fun stuff that you normally do? Do you know what? I sort of bounce all over the place. Uh, yeah. I, I play a lot of acoustic, just basically strumming songs. Yeah. But uh, but I've also picked up a bass recently. I've been learning some bass. And nice. Then, I do have an electric, but for that I use the uh, Rocksmith on the uh, PlayStation on the Xbox. Nice. So sort of learn to move around the fretboard a little bit more than just my regular chords and things. So. That's super cool. So did you have a goal of something in mind, or did you just come here and say, "Well, I don't know what this long-haired dude from Mournville is going to do." <laughs> Uh, you know what? I've got a lot to learn in any direction you want to go. So and I'm, I'm a curious guy. So whatever you're... Uh, I have been looking a little bit more... Uh, I do have an interest in trying to learn to play a bit of blues. Oh, nice. Um, and so, yeah, blues is super cool. Yeah. Um, and Justin, um, did you have anything in particular that you were interested in uh, um, tackling today? Because I want to see if I can find something that is similar, like that you both can work on. But if not, we'll kind of do things one at a time and, and separate. All right. Um, well, I'm pretty well rounded as well. I, you know, I play guitar for the school band, so I think blues would be a good thing to work on. Like I play that a lot at school. That'd be fun to play around with. Okay, blues it is. Oh, I'm I'm loving this lesson. This is super awesome. Um, and uh, um, for anybody that uh, may happen to watch this on a restream or on the stream, just so you know, we don't live stream every lesson. This is uh, just for an example for people to uh, um, be able to see kind of what video lessons are a little bit like. So, um, uh, Justin, have you done any blues rhythms or solos or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. like I, I learned all about, you know, the one, four, five chord progression at school. It's got the blue scale down, stuff like that. So Very nice. any, anything you want to work with, I'd be happy to try it. And Scott, how about you? Um, what do you, uh, um, know with blues? Like where, where are you at? Um, well, I know one, four, five, but, uh, I'm really just a, a downstairs basement player, which is where I am. So it's convenient for that, but uh, <laughs> I don't I, I usually play for myself, not audience. So I think Justin's a little more advanced than I am. But uh, I, I've worked a little bit just starting off on some finger picking uh, blues. Okay, uh, can uh, you maybe give us a little demonstration? Because I've never even seen you play. Yeah, well. And no, no uh, pressure, though, Scott. No pressure. <laughs> not, none felt. You know, I'm used to an audience of zero. So even one is a step up. So <laughs> I've been just working a little bit on getting the, uh, the bass thumb bass rhythm and then just doing a little bit picking with the fingers like a nice that's sort of uh style yeah yeah anyway. so um uh for me, what I heard there, it actually sounded a little bit more like folky kind of finger picking um on that not that the finger yeah, picking no, doesn't no, happen in blues yep. yeah yeah so um uh, if we did, have you, Scott, ever done, um, and I'll, uh, I can do more close up if we need, but uh, like a regular uh, kind of a rhythm pattern? More just on uh, sort of up the, more up there with the uh, E and the, the uh, uh, not a lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what about the uh, pentatonic scale? Um, like an A 
pentatonic scale. Have you ever done anything like that? Not really, no. Okay, yeah. nope, that's all good. Um, and Justin, I'm assuming that's uh, like kind of your deal, like you, you've got that yeah. down. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's cool. So um, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to get Scott um, the pentatonic scale. Um, so I'm going to work with him a little bit at first, Justin, and uh, and then I'm going to um, uh, kind of feather things into working with you so that people, this will actually be good for people to be able to see kind of how we start um, blues solo stuff and then kind of what we do when we got a little bit more going on. But you can uh, hang out with us, uh, Justin. That's That'd be awesome. All right. Sweet. Okay. So, Scott, um, do you know how to read tablature, Scott? I do. That is awesome. So pentatonic scale um, is, it's kind, I mean, it's actually known as the blues scale um, as well. Um, and I assume that you'll probably want to be able to at some point do some solo kind of stuff? Yes. Okay. Um, and by the way, lots of adults um, come to me that uh, are just starting off. Um, it's not an unusual thing at all. So, you know, people, sometimes people have this kind of imaginary thing that, you know, if they're an adult and they're playing music, they should be an expert. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. Um, okay, so I'm just going to quickly write this out. So we're going to do everything in the key of A. Um, and I'm going to share my screen with you here. Can you see this okay? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna do, um, okay, so this is gonna be, and I wanna see, so you can kind of start to memorize this as I put it together, um, or like just start to play through it, and that's all good. And this is a pretty simple scale that many, many people's careers have been based on. Look at you go. So you actually, you have done this before. A little, I knew the five, yeah, five, eight, the, the two guys, nice. yeah. Okay, so uh, why, why would we use this uh, um, scale? Um, you know, like what's, uh, do you understand how this scale might be useful for somebody that wants to do blues solos? Well, obviously you're you're sticking on the fifth position there and, and just going up and down the uh, the strings. Uh, yeah. It keeps a close proximity, and I'm guessing you can get a, do a different combination of notes that you can't get at other points on the fretboard. That's right. That's right. Um, and do you know the letter names on your um, guitar? Like, uh, and Justin, I'm assuming, I'm just going to assume you do. If, if you don't, uh, Justin, as I ask Scott things, if there's things that you don't know, just uh, kind of say, hey, I don't know that either. All right. Um, that works. Yeah. So, Scott, uh, do you know, like, um, especially on your fifth and sixth strings, those would be the two most important strings. Uh, do you mm -hmm. understand the letter names on there? I do. It takes me a moment to think. Obviously, I know the fifth fret is A. Yeah. Uh, and then that'll be A, C, I guess. The, Beautiful. Uh, a, yeah, A, C. It'll take me a moment after that. but uh, Yeah. Like a, cool. I can figure it out. So that's a, a D, E. Yep. Uh, like I said. That's awesome. So just to um, give you a little uh, quiz for a second. Now, do you understand sharps and flats? Like, could you find those yeah. notes? Okay. Yeah. So can you show me a G sharp on your sixth string? I'm a... Uh, no pressure, though. You're on your fourth fret, it looks like. Yep. You betcha. Yeah. And can you show me um, a, let's do a, let's do a D on your sixth string. D on my six? Sure. Yeah, you're not slow at that, Scott. That's good. That's good. Well, you can cheat. The 12th is going to be the same fret. So I, I sort of did a backwards math, one before the E. So here's my rule. It's not cheating if you win. <laughs> Fair no, I'm not above it. <laughs> okay. Um, for all the sports fans, I am not sporty at all. So in music, it's not cheating if you win. <laughs> um, okay, so that's super cool. Now I have... Now, do you understand, um, Scott, that uh, if... So if you're playing in the key of A, um, you know, we have a rhythm going in A, and then using that pentatonic scale... Like all of those notes will work together. Like the A pentatonic is what you would solo on in the key of A. 
Yes. And so okay. we, now is, I, I know a bit more, a, a little bit about scales, but so A in, in A will have, is it F and C sharp? Um, so, uh, yeah, so you're going to have C sharp, yeah, F sharp, and G sharp. And G sharp, okay. Yeah. The, um, uh, that's, that's, that's awesome. So if I was playing in the key of E, you would actually use your pentatonic scale on your 12th fret. Okay. If you're gonna, do you get that? Because it's an E, or you could use an open to. Right. Yeah. So, if I was playing yeah. in the key of G. I, I know I war, yeah. Yeah, if I was playing in the key of G, you'd use your third fret pentatonic. You get that? Yeah, and it's Sweet. consistent whichever, whatever your bass note is or whatever key it's in. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, yeah. Now I have, yeah. I have an old handout um, that I think is pretty cool. Although I don't know if you could meet a less cool person on earth than me, but. Uh, <laughs> I think this is pretty cool. Um, where is it? I'll just take a second here and before I share my screen. Exercises. Soloing. Blues solo ideas. There we go. So if you can see this. So this is written in my chicken scratch. And... Of course, I said everything was going to be an A. This is written out in E. <laughs> um, can you see that okay, Justin? Yeah. Okay. So the idea with this is to give somebody um, some blues things that they can do um, when uh, um, if they're playing by themselves. So we have our basic, we're, we're just going to use the one and the four instead of the one, four, five, so which would be the E and the A. So you yep. would so there's a whole bunch of little um, kind of blues fills. So the first part is the rhythm, and then you'd use the first fill, and then the second rhythm, which is if you can see it. So this is kind of the second side of the rhythm. I'm just going to uh, put that bar line in there. You know, it's pretty humiliating to see your handwriting online. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> So the idea with this, because improvising blues solos, yeah, there's the scales that work, right? And so the good thing about knowing your scales is that you have notes that are guaranteed to not sound bad, right? That makes sense. But our job when we're soloing is not um, to just find notes that don't sound bad. Our job is to find things that, that fit the song and are, and are tasteful. And that is actually the, the kind of the creative challenge of using the scales. Does that make some sense? Yep. Yeah. So the, the idea with this is to give a person a sense of improvising. And most people's view on what improvising is, is that it's making it up as you go along. And it's not. That's really not improvising. Um, the way I describe improvising is you guys and I are improvising this conversation. So we've never had this conversation, Scott, we just met. Um, uh, but we're improvising it because we've never had this conversation before, but I'm not making up new words in a new language. I'm using words that we all understand. And in phrases, and I've had this conversation kind of like this with a lot of other students, so I have a similar thing that I say, um, but I'm still improvising the conversation. And that's what improvising guitar solos is like, where you're using phrases that you're good at, um, and then putting them together in new ways for what you're finding. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. Yeah. So the idea of this page, and I will email this uh, to both of you guys, is that we have these fills. So I, got, I have this fill. And if you kind of go through and you learn the fills, um, you can do this part of the rhythm, and then you can choose any fill you want. And then you can play this rhythm and then play any fill you want. And that's the beginning of improvising. Does that make some sense? Yeah. Yeah, so, it does. Yeah, so as an example, and unfortunately, I got a buzz on uh, this uh, 12th fret on this guitar. Actually, I'm going to grab a different guitar. I'm going to be right back. All right. 
actually. I'm gonna try something here. I have. I'm just gonna plug directly into the console here. Can you guys? Oh, that's probably pretty loud on your side. Can you guys hear that guitar on your side? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the idea, and you let me know if it's too loud or too quiet on your side. Uh, so far, so good. Okay. No, that's a good level. Nice. So um, this is kind of how I would treat this. If I'm just, I'm going to do this rhythm and then this fill, that rhythm, uh, and then this fill, this rhythm, and then that one, and so on. And I'm kind of going to be BSing my way through it. Does that make sense? So you can kind of hear yeah. what I what I do with it. Okay. So. an extra beat it's not cheating if you win Whew. now what was i thinking with this next one uh, that's what i was thinking now i'm playing it fast and not that well um but that's and now this speed does not matter Okay, but that's kind of what you can do with it. And then you can start to, when you get a few of these fills going um, and you can work at them like you can, and then you own those because they'll work in a ton of other songs as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, yeah, Scott. So now shifting to a different spot on the fretboard. Yeah. I'm going to have a hard time in E uh, doing the, uh, the high octave. Yeah, for an acoustic guitar, for sure. It's now there's a cutaway, so yeah. Yeah, so there's one. This this sheet is made for because um, usually when I say to people, okay, we're going to improvise blues solos, they just kind of turn white and look at me um, when I say improvise a solo because they don't have any ideas, right? At first, when you have no experience and no riffs or anything like that, it's really tough. So this is to give people a launching point. But the other thing that I'm going to show you that's easier, and this is an exercise that I walk pro musicians through um, that I think is pretty cool too is um and this will work really good for you scott um do you understand your pentatonic scale um for e using the open strings uh what's the pattern for that one i'd have to figure it so out so to be actually. zero three yeah and zero, zero two, two. Zero two and uh, up to zero three zero three yeah you want to roll that once yep beautiful um, the, so here's what I um, say, I get a lot of pro musicians that'll come in and they'll say, I'm bored with my soloing and I need to know more theory in order to, uh, um, uh, get better. And what I usually do, um, and I usually get kind of a weird look at first, but I say, we're going to do a solo and we're only going to use four notes. And the reason why is in music, we get control over three things and only three things, the notes we play the timing we play them on and the tone that we use when we play them. That's it. That's all we get to control. So I say, oh, you're going to use four notes only. And I want to hear a really good solo using these four notes. And they're kind of like, well, you know, they're used to playing all over the neck and doing all this kind of stuff. But my theory is, is that if you can't make a great solo using only four notes, you really have no business adding in a whole bunch more. Does that kind of that make sense? sense. Yeah. So, what I recommend is using the middle four notes. So that'd be on your fourth string, zero, two, and then on your third string, zero, two. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you add in another note and you're cheating, yeah, you're still winning if you're getting good sounding stuff. It's about getting really good sounding stuff in a very limited way. Um, because it gives you a small place to focus. Because I could show you scales all over the neck, but then, you know, trying to use them is impossible. But when you can get a four note combination going, you just move that to different places on the scale. Okay? So you could do the same rhythm. This is using those four notes. Wicked. 
still use a four nose. It's all four notes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. My four so, notes may sound different than yours, though. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from a little bit of experience. So oh, now, okay. yeah. So, Scott, I'm going to um, uh, ask you, you have total volunteer opportunity. Would you like me to volunteer Justin to go first on this or would you rather go first yourself? Oh, I'll let Justin show me the way. <laughs> All, right, All right, Justin. So um, you can do either. Um, like reading through the fills, or you can take those four notes. Um, the fills, I think you can probably kind of do on your own um, to be able to use them with the rhythm. Does that make sense? I'm yeah. most interested in your creativity with the four notes. All right, sweet. Okay, so show us what you got with no time to think. Um, and uh, um, this doesn't have to be the best performance you've ever done. This is, uh, this is take one. And All right. Know, I'm sitting in a recording studio and it's not unusual to use more than 50 takes. Right. Yeah. Ah. Nice. <laughs> yeah nicely done that's a round of applause moment right there justin that was super Thank cool you. so um the so you kind of took what i said and took it to a new level already um which is you used kind of different combinations of four notes in your solo which is totally fine like i i'm kind of proposing this exercise in where we only use a single f set of four notes okay um, yeah for every solo but it's fine like it's you know <laughs> it's to kind of help when people like you're already kind of at the point where you can start to add other things in. Um, and it's a great exercise, even um, for pros uh, to just use the four notes and get great sounding things. So Scott, um, you can choose any four co note combination um, that you want on the scale. I typically recommend those middle four because they're like the easiest to play and get at, but it's totally your call. I'll give it a go. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Beautiful. Whoops. That's good. All right. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I'm super impressed with that, especially um uh you're doing that and trying to get that rolling right off uh like never hearing the concept before that's super impressive and i can hear that you do like you can sort of feel where beat one is um right like that's kind of the big thing is that you can um feel where your timing should be yeah yeah so the other thing that you can do with this um and is this kind of going in the direction you were wanting to be able to with solos, Scott? Like, is that is this something oh, for, that you think you'll use? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, more time, I think, would take. Like, just looking at that, I'm more. I would mirror what was written on the page than actually improvising. Which this is a good step to to going in that direction. Yeah, and the other thing is that you can use both, right? Take a fill from the page and then improvise on your next round. Improvise the four notes. Right. Yeah. Does that make some sense? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so the, like you said, other, you give a, you give us, you give the tools, and then you just got to put them in a certain range, whatever you choose, basically. Yeah, and the hardest part about this is it's all about taste, right? So, teaching improvising guitar solos, it's like one of the most fun challenges in my career because, I mean, I can write the solo for you, but then you're not improvising. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Showing somebody how to write um, is pretty cool. And one of the things that you can do with it is you can either record on your iPhone, you playing a rhythm and then solo along with it. And I recommend trying to write a solo no more than 20, 30 seconds. OK, 
Okay. And you just you can steal fills from the sheet that I've uh, um, that I'm going to give you, um, or use the the four notes. And you try to make a solo that has a beginning, a middle, and an ending that works, um, because improvising is really songwriting just done quicker. That's really what it is. Does that make some sense? Absolutely. Yeah. The other thing that is cool that I want to show you and. You know, let me know if I'm overloading you or, or not, because I get pretty excited with these and it's easy for me to <laughs> sometimes show a little too much. <laughs> um, you can pull up a backtrack. So you go to YouTube. I'm just going to turn blues A minor. So you Google that and a whole bunch of stuff is going to come up. And people do this. And the, the biggest mistake that I see with this is they're like 10 minutes long. Right. And people will solo for 10 minutes which is sort of like if you're having a conversation, it's like blathering on for 10 minutes. Um, a solo is usually 15 to 30 seconds. If you're in Pink Floyd, it's five minutes. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you put it on for 10 minutes, improvise a solo and then stop, like keep it 30 seconds and then stop and then use like a restart button. Don't just keep going for 10 minutes because then you get this kind of hunting and pecking for notes um, that is... Uh, really useless. It doesn't sound like a solo. It sounds like a guy that's playing through the scale. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is I want to show you an example. I'm going to pull up. Can you hear that? Uh, you'll hear this. Can you hear that through your system? Yeah. Yeah. And I want to see if you can hear my guitar at the same time. And it's just clean. Can you hear my guitar or is it quiet? Uh, it's really quiet. Uh, is that is that quiet? Still too? pretty quiet. Yeah, I've never yeah. tried to do it like that on my system, so I'm gonna have to do a systems check later and uh, sort that out. Uh, but my guitar is still really quiet for you. Uh, it's a little bit louder. It sounds like it's coming through um, your mic and not the system. Yeah, yeah. It just sounds like playing electric without an amp. Yeah, that changed on me. Oh, look. oh, yeah, this is what happens when you run a vintage console. You get things that uh, take you by surprise. Okay, well, that's just fine. Um, I'm going to grab my acoustic, and then I'll do that through there. Okay, so we got there the There we go. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm still going to use these middle four notes um can you see which notes i'm using there so this is an a so it's five seven five seven on the middle two strings yeah. oh uh one string higher there scott five seven five seven or yeah on oh, the... sorry, I was, yeah i was on the a string I was on the a. now i'm gonna bend slide all that stuff i'm gonna try not to cheat <laughs> okay um <laughs> What I want you to notice is that when I improvise this solo, I kind of do small phrases. And this is how I recommend people start. So you do uh, um, you know, a phrase that's three or four, five notes long, and then pause. Let your solo breathe. Most people, when they start to improvise solos, they play way too much, way too quickly. Does that make some sense? So I'll show you what All I right. mean. That's about as long as a person would go and your solo's up that's four notes sweet does that kind of make some sense yeah yeah so and what you want to build up uh, as you go you're going to progress and build up so if you throw in a few unexpected things i guess yeah yeah um and so do you um you probably don't have it so you can put a backtrack on and kind of do that but that would be um the exercise that you'd really want to do um to start to kind of pull this um together for yourself um now 
you will have, because there's a lot, there's a lot going on now. And, and do either of you guys have any questions about this so far? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Okay, yeah, Scott, no, are you I've, feeling good on that? I'm like a sponge, taking in a lot here. It's good. <laughs> so, and you will have the ability to watch the live stream and uh, see it again if you forgot. Um, right. And you'll have that sheet that I'll send you guys. Actually, I'll post it into the Facebook uh, um, uh, area after I'm done too. Um, so now um, we still got a little bit of time left that I'd like to spend with you guys. So maybe there's something else that we can roll. Um, you are working on some finger picking kind of stuff, Scott. Um, the where were you getting most of your information for that? Uh, just a, a, a finger picking blue uh, book, actually. Just one sec, I'll. Yeah, yeah. Tell you exactly it. what the title is. Basically, <laughs> beginners, beginning finger style blues. Nice, nice. The uh, um. So I've literally I'm at the beginning where I'm just starting to get the thumb, bass, strum, and trying to play notes like off an A, off a, you know. Yep. I'm not quite used to that. Be able to hold it with just the one finger and then figure out what the other. So eventually, I guess you could do that with a slide as well. So you can use the other fingers to do the rest of the scale. So are they trying to get you to um, uh, play like rhythm and solo stuff, like blues solo stuff at the same time? That's where that's the direction it's going. I'm at the very beginning stage of that, basically. That's pretty yeah. cool. So and right now, I, what I was playing before is just uh, holding the chord, basically, and then just getting your fingers used to working on the individual strings. But eventually, nice. yeah, that's what they want is so you can work the scale from holding the chords, basically. Cool, cool. Cool. The um, and so that's kind of more for solo blues playing, like when you're playing all by yourself where you're holding down the rhythm and uh, playing the solo as well. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And do you, for finger picking, like you actually are really good at that. Like I, uh, sometimes when I teach advanced players that have never finger picked, they feel like their right hand was abducted by aliens when they start trying to finger pick because it's really tough off the, right off the bat. Um, and, uh, you did, well, how about Justin? Um, are you, have you done any finger picking at all? Um, pretty limited. I haven't done any like in blues, I would say just every now and then, if I hear it on a song, I might search it up on YouTube. Yeah. Did very, and, very little bit in band. Like, yeah, not a whole and lot. Finger picking. It's really not stuck in a genre. All genres use it. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's kind of a good general overall skill. One of the best um, places. So Scott, you also said that you, um, I'll do this with my acoustic, that you, you play chords, right? Yeah. So if you're doing, you know, I'd be sound even better if I was in tune. <laughs> All right. No, we don't want violin. What's going on here? Okay. Um, so that's all the bending I did. Um, so if you're doing a song, let's just say it's uh, G, C, and D. It's pretty common to do um, strumming in the chorus and in the verse do a little more of a uh, finger picking. Does that kind of make sense? Which brings uh, the dynamic of the song where you're, you know, you're doing your finger picking and then you're in the chorus. So that you actually have kind of a better dynamic going on in the song. So Scott, I would look at um, like what other um, styles of music do you play? Uh, like I said, it, it just varies, and, and it's it, a lot of you know, I guess '70s rock, that sort of thing, is pretty straightforward to, to play on my end. Nice. Uh, and Eagles, maybe. Kind yeah, yeah. So um, I mean. But, uh, that's super awesome. Like, there's a lot of great. If you want to get good at guitar, learning a bunch of Eagles tunes is not a bad way to do it. Um, and, you know, if you're, but this also applies to like campfire guitar. I don't know if you've ever done that, but where you're playing along, you don't really know the song, you're looking at other people's hands, you're listening to what they're playing, and you're trying to kind of chord along. Um, 
the usual dynamic of the campfire uh, guitar is everybody pounding all the chords all the time. And if you're the guy that kind of holds back a little bit in the verse and, you know, a little bit quieter, you're going to get buried and it's fine. Um, but it adds a different dynamic. And then the chorus actually gets bigger and your campfire uh, um, uh, music starts to sound a little better when there's more than one player playing. Does that make some sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the that's the direction I'd like to learn as well, because just playing straight chords gets you're lacking in variance, I guess. It's nice to throw in that little bit of flair in between. Yeah. So let's take something that you already know. Uh, we're going to do some creative stealing, Scott. Um, so the uh, um, can you play me the uh, hand like the what you did in the A? I'm not sure what you played uh, for that from that blues book. We're going to steal yeah, that. It, yeah, it just it took, just goes uh, A, D, E. Yeah, but just and, the finger picking pattern, is it the same for every chord? Uh, it changes a little bit near the end. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll steal the first one. So what's sure. the, what are you playing on that? It's just counting out, so. Half notes and quarter notes, I think. Okay. So, up and back. Yeah, I now the cool thing about that is when you look at finger picking and Justin, you can do this. Is it's actually more about what is the rhythm that you're playing? Because you're doing da 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 da, just really steady. Sorry. <laughs> right, just all eighth notes, and that's not exactly what you played, but it's. Uh, and Justin's got it rolling right away. Um, yeah. The uh, so finger picking. If you're the only guy finger picking. You can kind of do what you want if you're sticking with the same, like the timing that's needed. Um, but if somebody else starts finger picking beside you, if you're doing different things and you're not in different what's called voicings, um, you can end up in some, with some clashing notes and uncool things happening. So I'm going to assume that you're the smart guy at the campfire and that you're uh, the one that's going to finger pick. And so if you're playing, let's do like a... Uh, uh, Actually, I'm going to go simpler. Uh, we're going to go one, two, three, four. For our strumming pattern on G. So it's down, 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 up, down, up. Does that make sense? Do you think you got that, Justin? Yeah. You think yeah. you got that, Scott? Yep. Can I hear you play it? Good. Like an old pro. That's awesome, like an old pro. Um, so now you can do, um, this is the exact same timing. Da, 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 da. And, you, and it doesn't really matter what strings you play. The root note's a little bit important. It's nice to have that on beat one. Do you wanna see if you can make up a little uh, finger picking pattern? You guys' pattern doesn't have to be the same. It's the same pattern, same timing as that strumming pattern. All right. Yep, Justin added in an extra note, but that's cool. Like I say, it's not cheating if you win. It sounded good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Scott, how about you? Kinda... Actually, that was good. <laughs> that was really good because I'm throwing you under the bus here, like getting you to do this right away. Um, so I, um, uh, but now, like if you're strumming a song, take the verses. Do you know what the difference between a chorus and a verse is? Uh, the chorus is the repetitive part that's going to go between the verses, I guess. It's the, yeah. Yeah. Or as guitar players, the verses are the parts between solos. Um, the, uh, <laughs> um, the, uh, but really the chorus is the part where the lyrics, yes, repeat. And then the verse is usually kind of more subdued and it has typically the same music, but different words. So, um, so then, you know, pick a song and you don't have to play the same rhythm line that the other guitar players are, are playing. And uh, um, just see if you can make up some uh, finger picking patterns that go along with it. Because you don't have to do other people's finger picking patterns. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be just fine um, as long as you're playing in timing, because all the notes from the chord will work. I think that was pretty cool and pretty fun. And I want to see um, now, do either of you guys have questions first? My my guinea pigs, um, do you guys have any questions about anything that we've done?
Uh, no, I think I'm good. Cool. Scott? Yeah, no, I think I'm good too. That was, was it fun? Uh, it was. And I, I did especially like just showing the, the framework of the blues there, playing the, the rhythm and then a fill and then rhythm and fill and just some ideas for what's put in there. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, I'm going to go see because I've been totally ignoring our Facebook comments. Um, and I'm going to see if there's any questions. Um, I see. I see Sunday. Hey, Sunday, how are you doing? I see Glenn Walker. Uh, you guys both know him. He's the one that referred both of you. <laughs> um, and uh, and Ty, Ty Alderman Brown, thank you for joining. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know EJ says, can you pl can you play perfect? So um, I don't know if that means if you're talking the song or if you're saying, can I please play perfect? And I will assure you, I am human and I definitely cannot play perfect. Oh, they I probably mean the, the Ed Sheeran song. I'm guess, thinking yeah. so. Yeah. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, I may have played it before, but that does not necessarily mean that I know it. I've probably taught it. Actually, I know I have. But I can't. I cannot play that off the top of my head. Um, so I don't see any other questions that pertain to what we've tackled. And thanks, EJ. Um, I didn't mean to be sarcastic. It's in my nature. But uh, I tease everybody that I, that I know. So I guess I'm going to count you amongst them. And thanks for joining us. Um, uh, so thank you, gentlemen, uh, Justin and Scott. Um, this was super fun. Like These are some of the most exciting lessons on earth for me. i um, been doing this. I'm 43 now. I've been teaching since I was 12 and uh, they're still just crazy exciting, especially with improvising stuff because it's so hard to learn. Um, and uh, um, so that's why I get a little bit carried away and go overboard on those. <laughs> and I, I appreciate you, uh, you guys joining me and uh, um, we'll see if we can hook up and do this again because I think uh, um, that'd be super fun for you guys. Yeah. It'd be fun. Well, it'd be fun for me. I'm not trying to tell you what'll be fun for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks a lot Paul. that was good yeah awesome okay well you guys enjoy the rest of your day and uh i'm just gonna see if i can pull up my fancy schmancy uh um how's this that's good content on uh um live where i'm looking for my stuff because i'm supposed to have all these fancy um endings and stuff like that oh so, you got an outro okay I, I got an outro i got an outro so that i can get away from my computer and turn things off and all that kind of fun stuff uh, <laughs> anything worth doing is worth overdoing right justin exactly <laughs> like we did with your recording that was uh, super cool i uh um you can check it out um the wipeout uh, recording we did we recorded in one day, we recorded and mixed everything in one day. You played all the drums. This is including setup for drum miking. Um, and you were there with the mix the whole time. And most people like are just dying when they watch a mix go on like of boredom. And you were super enthusiastic. And I think it turned out really well in the, I think it was eight hours total. Yeah, probably. In studio time, as I um, uh, tell um, my wife, there's no such thing as a quick recording. Um, and eight hours for one song is is like moving and hustling and uh, you did great with that so you can check it out i'm gonna um throw glenn under the bus it's on glenn walker's channel on youtube um and uh i'll throw a link up to it uh um later so that you can check out justin's uh version of wipeout and thank you guys so much i appreciate your uh your time and uh you guys were super fun and you know especially doing everything live in a first lesson and it was great to meet you scott you as well okay we'll see you guys in a vet all right bye-bye see ya.